Hello. Hey, hi, Emily. Hello, I think you're you. <laughs> Hello, John. Hello, Piyush. Hello. Just a reminder for those of you that are just joining us, please go ahead and open the meeting notes doc. Welcome everyone. We're gonna wait a few more minutes before we get started. Looks like there is still a meeting link floating around somewhere that is invalid. I dropped a link to the notes in the chat. Good afternoon, party people. Hey, Chase. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Lovely. All right, as folks pile in, this is a quick reminder that the meeting is being recorded and posted to YouTube shortly thereafter. Your participation in these meetings is an agreement to abide by the Cloud Native Security Code of Conduct, which can be found in the repo. All right, please make sure that you log or you sign in for attendance. Make sure we got everybody covered. If you have any updates that you would like to discuss during today's meeting, please put the title of your update in a parentheses after your name. Uh, STAG leadership, if you could also just put your, your uh, position after your name as well, that would be great. If you have no updates, just say no updates after your name. Um, Ash is gonna be our scribe today. Is there anyone else? I can help with that. That would be fantastic. Thank you. Okay. 
since we didn't really have much of an agenda today, I threw a bunch of things in there that we needed to cover. So before we do this group's round robin of updates, I wanted to go through and provide everybody a quick overview of the APAC region meeting that was on June 7th. Um, we did some intros, wasn't a large attendance. For those of you that are not aware, uh, security tag supports uh, two regions now for meetings. We have the APAC region as well as the Americas. Um, so if this time is not convenient for you, I would suggest taking a look at the APAC regions meeting. They are every other week um, at around 10 to 11 Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific or whatever the time zone conversion is. Math is hard for me today. Um, we talked about the Cloud Native Security Controls catalog activities that is getting started. We talked about the serverless security paper and what's going on with that. We welcomed our new chairs, Brandon and Aradna, and thanked JJ and Sarah for their service. Um, we recapped the North America meeting and basically talked about the stag and a little bit more about what has been going on. So let's look. Aradna, you've got an update on serverless. Um, yes, um, we had three people volunteer for project leads and they are all three going to be the project leads for serverless. Um, that helps us with backups, right? If somebody is not available, then the other person can pick up. They are working on scheduling an initial meeting so we can set up the logistics and you know figure out the scope, go through the table of contents and if we need to make adjustments um, and also timelines by when we would like to um, get this paper out. Um, and also look for other contributors who may be interested and who have not heard about this initiative. Um, that's just beginning. So it's, it is it is their time to get involved. So if any of you have not uh, put your name as contributor and would like to contribute, please go to the issue um, that we discussed last meeting last week and uh, put your name in there and get involved. Thank you very much. That's all my update for now, Emily. Thank you. Thanks, Rata. Um, Piyush, you have an update on 692? Uh, hey, Emily. Yeah, uh, not so much of an update as just uh, would like to welcome all contributions, all suggestions to that issue so that we can probably get a bit started on that and incorporate all the changes, all the suggestions into it before we design a plan with it. Within it. Just kind of a reminder, nothing else. Okay. Um, for those of you that don't know, that's the security focused community proposal. Um, it still requires triage. So we'd like to see um, some folks uh, comment on it for interest to determine whether or not it's something that the group can take on with our current bandwidth. And thanks for the quick turnaround on this one. I know you just brought it up for the the first time last week and really nice for you to take the first step to put it in writing. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. Uh, Frederick. Hello. So part of what we're doing is we have a cloud native a controls catalog that we're building as a subgroup under the under the stag. And we're meeting every Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific. If you're interested in helping us catalog controls for cloud native uh, for cloud native projects, please come uh, please come and join us at that time. Or if you can't make that time, that's okay. Uh, come join us on our on the Slack channel. I'll make sure the Slack channel gets posted. And we're finalizing the the schema on what this looks like. We're we're not looking at providing guidance to like how do you adhere to a specific standard. Like we're not saying here's how you adhere to 800-53 as an example. But right now, the initial turn of the crank is about just identifying the controls that are that are there across multiple projects. So, if that's something that you're interested in helping in, uh, please get a please get a hold of us. And I've also listed the issue. Uh, you're able to to help contribute in, in that area. Thank you. I missed the Providence. Who was that? Uh, this is for the Cloud Native Security Controls Catalog. Right. This is it. 
I'm sorry, can you repeat, Mark? You broke up. Who was the point of contact, the person just speaking? Ah, uh, Frederick is was the one that was just speaking, but there is another individual who is actually leading the effort. Um, the information for that is on the issue number 635. Thank you. Okay. Um, any new folks in the group that want to introduce themselves? Yeah, hi, I'm Andrew, uh, Andrew Krug, I work at Datadog. Um, I'm gonna be working on the serverless uh, white paper thing with the other leads. So hoping to kick that off soon. Awesome, welcome. It's wonderful to have you. Um, all right, so next up on our agenda, if there's no other updates, pause, no? Okay, um, wanna talk a little bit about security reviews. One of the things that this group does um, that we haven't really talked about openly or recently within the past couple of months because they're ongoing and they're something that typically happens in the background is one of the things that the STAG does for the talk is provide security reviews of projects within the CNCF. We recently went through a huge effort to revitalize and make updates based on feedback and the first five security assessments that we did. Um, and right now we have one project that is currently in process for security review and is getting closer to wrapping up. We have another one that's closely on the heels of that. And then we're going, it looks like we might have a third one coming to us shortly. So for those of you that don't know, security reviews are a way for projects within the CNCF to kind of get a better understanding of the state of their security, not only whether or not the application itself for the project is designed with security in mind and is following industry best practices, but also to kind of determine what are their development practices, do they have security around how they're accessing their project and their source source code. So we've been focusing a lot on supply chain security for those projects, in addition to the general security review. Um, if you're interested in becoming a security reviewer, feel free to reach out to any of the STAG leadership to ask questions. Typically, our process for bringing new security reviewers on is that you join one effort, you kind of shadow, you participate a little bit, um, and then you after you've got one or two security reviews under your belt, you're more than welcome to take on a position as a lead security reviewer. There's different levels of um, security reviews. There's a self-assessment, which is something the project typically does themselves. Then there's the joint review, which is a little bit more effort. And our joint reviews, depending on the community skill set and the time that's available, may or may not include some hands-on um, security evaluation. Did I miss anything from any of the other leadership team? Nope. Okay. Um, so that's about security reviews. So if you're interested, we have a couple that are currently going on and then we'll have some more coming soon. We recently made a new governance channel. We wanted to provide everybody a place where they can come and talk to the leadership team or talk about how the group is run, the way that we do things, the processes around things. I, for instance, bringing a proposal into our project, how does our roadmap work, and kind of talking through like the basic logistics of what makes this community great. So if you have any questions or if you have ideas or you don't understand something, feel free to jump in that channel and ask a question. That's what it's there for. And then the last thing that I had on the agenda to talk about was ongoing efforts. This group has a lot of ongoing efforts. We spent some time this past year coming up with a roadmap to understand like what is our bandwidth and what is our workload. Um, we currently have, we just wrapped up the supply chain paper. However, that group is kicking off again to do a reference architecture. So if you're interested in that, check out the tag security supply chain channel for more information. We've got the serverless paper starting up. We've got the controls catalog initiative starting up as part of an exploration into one of the group's charters for auditability. Um, what else am I missing? 
there's a whole bunch of stuff that we're working on and we wanna make sure that everyone is aware of what those activities are. There's the policy group working group. Andres, Aradna, Ash, what am I missing? There's also the work around the uh, cloud native security map, uh, which is yep. ongoing. And uh, we'll be moving on to the design phase real soon, probably by next week. So um, we will require more volunteers as well for that. So if you're interested in chat, please uh, join the cloud native security map channel as well. Can you explain a little bit about what that is? Right, so uh, we had the cloud native security, um, the, the white paper. And the white paper gave you an overview of uh, what kind of security that you need to do during the development, uh, during the distribution phase. And so the, it did not provide any specific projects that you can use during each of these phases. And so what the map tries to do is try to give you specific projects which you can do for like development or for distribution from a security perspective. So we are trying to build out this map which helps say new users if they want to uh, say they only know about a specific project and they want to know how they can move on to different aspects of security. So the purpose of this map is to provide this, these guided tours so that uh, new practitioners or even existing security people who only know about specific projects on how to get overall security throughout your pipeline. So uh, we, we initially have done a text-based uh, uh, map right now which uh, basically takes all the different phases of the white paper and puts them at, in like a text format with the respective projects. Uh, and thanks so much for contributing, like a lot of folks from the community contributed towards that. And so the next stage now is to be, uh, provide more guidance around how you can move about these different phases, what are the interactions between these phases, and uh, some of the design aspects, like some of the UI aspects to make this more interactive. So that's gonna be the next phase for the map, which is pretty exciting. So if you all are interested in that, join the, uh, the map channel on tax security and uh, reach out to uh, any one of us if you want to contribute. Thanks. Chase, what are you the project lead of? Hello. Yes, uh, I stalled on a little bit the last week, but we're going to be doing some audio recordings for white papers, maybe other printed materials for distribution. Um, starting a new gig this week, so got hamstrung a little bit, but the wheels will start turning on that soon. There is a, a tag security audio channel, if I recall. Chat, yeah, comment on that, and I'll kind of be putting. Chase, you're fading in and out, so it's a little hard for us to hear you. Sorry, it's actually a really cool effect I can just do with my voice. Uh, just trying to show off. <clears throat> uh, tag security audio, please join if you want to be recorded or help with audio production. Thank you. And that effort is to provide a little bit more accessibility into the papers that this work has written and produced for folks that don't have the time or don't have the capacity to be able to read them at length. So one other thing that I'd like to bring up for those of you that haven't taken a look yet is we do have a roadmap and planning project. This is kind of how the group runs a lot of our activities, how we work through what our bandwidth looks like, because we have a lot of active um, community members, but we want to make sure that no one is open, overburdened and everyone has an opportunity to participate and engage in things of interest to them. So we've got, um, it's project board number four, if you go to the repo, if you look through a couple things, we have our regular business, we have areas for exploration where somebody has made a suggestion or it's within our charter and we should probably start focusing on different efforts around it. Then we have proposals and we've tried to rank them in the past based off of interest by the community. So if you are, have a couple of minutes in your day and you're going through all of our issues and you find something of interest to you that hasn't been started yet, feel free to comment or plus one that because it lets us know if the community is interested in contributing to those efforts. 
Um, for example, one uh, or three proposals that we currently have, but haven't exactly had a lot of traction recently is cloud native security paper webinar. And this might uh, roll into Piyush's proposal. There's also um, the concept of developing a micro site for us to be able to categorize and highlight presentations, better index a lot of the content that this group is creating, and then also host many micro blogs for that, um, whether or not they are specific to the group or specific to any of the papers that are being generated. So feel free to go through the issues, comment on things that you like, um, myself and the other leads try to uh, triage a lot of those efforts against what the community is currently interested in. Is there anything else? Does anybody have anything they want to bring up? Anything they want to talk about? Could I give an elevator pitch on what the policy working group encompasses? I, I see it mentioned and I uh... I'm not sure what exactly would be meaningful. Aradna, could you talk to that a little bit? Apologies, what was the question again? Uh, the policy working group, what's the scope? What's the hopeful deliverable? Well, so right now we're working on a white paper on policies and there are different types of policies. There's a table of contents, which was actually evangelized even in this group. I'm happy to share that table of contents to you or point you to that. Um, and if you wanna get involved, please jump in. So in addition to all the policies, my focus is security policies, right? What are the security policies we need to deploy at the Kubernetes layer, at the microservices layer, and as well as in the CI CD pipelines, and what are the detective controls then if the policies get violated, how do we detect on them and how do we auto remediate them? So th that will be the focus um, that I provide in that paper. Um, so cool. some, some people have actually volunteered to write some subsections. Um, so let me put that in this chat and then uh, Possibly, if you are interested, you can join that effort as well. So the idea is to kind of collate organizational policies that would be advantageous to have if you have cloud native workloads components in your environment, and maybe right. even the controls that kind of sit underneath of those policies for enforcement yeah. standards. Okay. Exactly. I wonder if that overlaps with the uh, control catalog at all. But cool. So control catalogs, um, control catalog is slightly different in my opinion, right? Control catalog is how do you continuously validate that you're in compliance? Yes, some of the policies may be duplicate, right? But still control catalog is much more a bigger effort in my opinion, because um, all these standards, right? NIST 800-53 plus, um, uh, you know, several other standards, right? SOX, GDPR, all these controls and regulatory policies. How do we continually um, validate them, right? Without having to do all kinds of manual reviews. The goal is to have probes in the system so you can produce a report which tells you which policies you're meeting and which controls you're not meeting today. Um, but policies are um, policies can be in the design itself and also implementation of the policies. And yes, oh. some of it can be fed into the controls validation as well. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I don't know about policies. I have a separate question as well, as long as we're through with questions. Um, I noticed some efforts uh, being referred to as working groups and some not. And like, so when I'm looking at the supply chain stuff, that kind of group of folks is pivoting um, to another kind of distinct deliverable effort, but keeping that same channel kind of blurs the lines for me. Are, is there a specific definition for an effort underneath of tag security that is a working group? Are we differentiating between sort of um, time bound efforts with one deliverable that then disband versus 
do we have kind of longer running groups that are meant to be indefinite? Maybe what I'm asking makes sense. I'm just trying to make sure of kind of the organization of things, or at least that I understand. Yeah, so I think uh, that's a great question. We've talked about this amongst the leadership team for a while, and I don't think that we have a solid decision on how we want to manage that. Organically, what's been happening is usually someone provides a proposal, they kind of take ownership of that proposal, and it's built around a specific concrete deliverable. And then that's typically done. So the cloud native security white paper, for instance, that was a group of folks that got together, developed some content, made a deliverable, and the group kind of disbanded. Um, because that's the, one of the main reasons for the stack to exist that makes sense. In other instances, there is an ongoing community of interest within this stack on particular topic areas. So we see this with the supply chain group. The supply chain group was a bunch of folks that got together who said that they wanted to do all these grand things, which is fabulous. And we love that level of enthusiasm, but we wanted to be able to break down all of those ideas into more tangible and concrete, specific deliverables. That way they're not all trying to do everything all at once and boil the ocean. So the way that that group has been working is some folks participated in the paper, other folks took a step back from the paper and have been following along the channel and now they're stepping forward again with what that new activity looks like. So we've been loosely referring to them as a working group conceptually built around that um, same interest area, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we formalize that as a thing within the stack. Does yeah, that, that make makes sense? sense? Yeah, totally. The, the only reason I am maybe asking clarification, one, so we can talk out loud and other people can hear, but two, sometimes if there's a kind of distinct deliverable time bound thing, I'm looking at it and thinking, oh, they're at the end of kind of their process doesn't make sense for me to jump in in the last week but if it's a thing where it's just going to kind of keep rolling forward evolve then getting involved at any time makes sense so maybe some nomenclature there would make sense for us but anyway Look, just like if, if, if you jump in last minute there might be folks looking for a final review or someone to go with like a fine tooth comp so rather than thinking about time bound deliverables i would think about it as artifact oriented deliverables. Uh, these are these are tactical. If, if it's going to take, if you're coming in and you're, you poke a hole or like smell something that should gate this thing getting published, uh, we should delay that rather than saying, oh, we said we were going to do this by this date. Uh, let's just make a go, no go at this point. And, and we might have some oversight. So I, I think Let's let's think about it as we we're gonna produce something out of this group. This should be like the project should be tactically oriented. Sure, the strategy should inform should inform like the themes or undercurrents or like how does this fit in with other artifacts or other pieces or prior work or future work. All of that is great, but yeah, the projects will be like. It, it will be this doc or it will be like this particular repo or this other thing. Does that yeah, help? Totally. I think that's totally fair. There, there are some mechanics there, like with the supply chain, higher, with the supply chain Slack channel, right? Like if, if that same group of folks wants to pivot and work on a second thing, do they make another channel to keep the efforts distinct or do they kind of, you know what I mean? Like just organizational function wise. But I totally hear what you're saying as far as don't hesitate to jump in, even if it's fourth quarter. Sorry, that's an, that's an Americanism um, because there's obviously good things to be done, but you know it violates my sense of manners to jump in at the last moment, drop a bunch of you know crap on something. So um, that's a personal, personal yeah. thing. But yeah, I hear you. Thank you. You you bring a great point about the the mechanics, right? We don't we don't want the conversations to be lost. And, and we want folks to, to have an arena. It's not like, hey, we finished this thing. Let's hit the reset button, start again. Uh, you point out the supply chain group being, being a great example. We do have a, a long running channel or, or a channel that's not gonna be going away. 
but just to organize ourselves, we're going to like light up individual issues or project boards, like just burn through those boards and get the work done and, and close that particular issue. And next time we're doing something, open up a, a separate one. But yeah, we're going to have a, a long running call, like a bi-weekly call for the foreseeable future and, and the channel in place. But yeah, feel free to like come in or, or drop out at any point. Like if you are not part of the group at the onset, that, that shouldn't preclude you. That only means we've been missing out on you all, all this long. Oh, I'm precluded. I'm very. Thanks. So that, that actually brings a good point. We have a ton of tag security channels and they're, they're kind of centralized or they're usually created as a result of a deliverable or an artifact that the group is working towards. But as those activities come to close, we don't get rid of those channels. Um, we've often found that there are STAG members that jump in the channels to share relevant information that's topical to that. We see that in the supply chain channel. Um, our tag security events channel, we originally built for Cloud Native Security Day, but we use it for other cloud native security events. So either cross posting where our community members are running local events for them um, for their community or Cloud Native Security Day or KubeCon or if somebody's got a meetup that they want to open up to a lot of other people like they had Cloud, cloud Native Security Meetup New York. So feel free to jump in any of the tag security channels, find out if there's any currently active ongoing work or potentially post something or of interest. So I have a question on the uh, serverless topic. Um, is it meant to focus on the security implementation as to how serverless architecture might help? Or is it more generic than just uh, more encompassing rather than <clears throat> just the security part? So um, I can comment on that. Um, our goal is to focus on security for serverless because there's already a serverless working group in CNCF. They also have a previous white paper that talks about what is serverless and what are the use cases of serverless, et cetera. Our focus is security and we'll be taking an approach of identifying security controls from a service provider perspective as well as from a service consumer perspective. Okay. Yeah, thanks, uh, that helps. Um, so uh, has there been a uh, definition or any type of a scope have been defined already or is it just a starting? It's just starting. We have a table of contents, which we still are reviewing and finalizing. Please feel free to jump into um, that working group and provide your input if you're interested. Sure, is there a Slack channel as well with that one or? Yes, it is um, called Tag Serverless. Um, let me let me share the Tag time. Security Serverless. Yeah, okay. it Sorry. was recently updated. Right, thank you. And I have one more question on the cognitive portion. I heard what's been said so far. Now, is the cognitive um, task group is still live, and um, and does it have some sort of a future um, tasks, so to speak, or some sort of mini project that has been conceived at this point? Or uh, what's the what's the goal there on the cognitive? So, I'm sorry, on the which cloud native project? Um, that's one of the question, actually. I'm not sure exactly how many projects are there in the cognitive side of it. Are so, there so numerous? This group has a lot of cloud native security um, related projects. If you check out our, pro our roadmap and planning document or the issues, so the roadmap and planning, uh, roadmap and planning project board um, was dropped in the chat earlier by Andres. Um, you can also go through the issues and see which ones are actively being worked. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> um, so this is a lot of what's currently what we've talked about in these meetings, what we have planned um, and scheduled to be coming up, um, works in progress. 
please forgive us if this is not entirely up to date as of this meeting because we have um, it's human driven, not automated. So there's a lot of different activities that are going on and we try to keep everything that the group has decided is like we're going to we're going to strive to get this done this year on this one, but there are others. Um, we have a general project tracking board for items that might not necessarily be on the roadmap. They're not as big of an effort, um, but they should still be done or the community has an interest around them. We have our security assessments slash security reviews. That's a regular ongoing activity. We also have um, our general regular business about things that are going on within the group. So whether or not it's a governance or changing some of the structure within the repo, updating our readmes or our roles, our process documentation, because we do get a lot of like just general health and maintenance of the repo to make sure the language that we're using, if it's changed, is now consistent across the entire project. Super. Thank you. Appreciate it. And we're sharing this for you to know how is the leadership team organizing work. Uh, this these are not hard constraints, or this doesn't mean you're not able to like share what you're working on if, if you're running an active initiative in, in your organization or whatever other organization you're 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 part of within the community. So what we're discussing with Chase earlier is is like showing visibility of like what are the bounds of of what we're calling a project but this doesn't mean this is not a place for like free thinking engineering and and bringing up new ideas or being a forum of discussions for things that may not be captured here okay great thank you yeah. So with the with the serverless paper, if you if you see well, like well, this this is being scoped to this, but it's not covering this other thing. You can bring it up and say we should probably consider doing the part that we're not covering down the line and creating a a proposal for that. If if it doesn't stand the case and and within the serverless white paper. Understood. Thank you. <clears throat> only, only organizing like to try to move work forward. But yeah, we want to encourage and welcome all ideas and anything you might have the desire to work on. And one of the things that um, this group work also kind of strives for, but we don't actually have captured visibly on those boards is presentations. So one of the things that we try to do or bring to the community is presentations with a security focus around cloud native projects, around cloud native topics. That's how a lot of these discussions kind of start up. Um, the supply chain work, for instance, kind of kicked off from a software factory presentation. So if you are a member of a cloud native project or an open source project, or you have something that you've been working on and you're interested in that the community could benefit from, you are encouraged to file an issue for a presentation. Um, we've updated the template to be more consistent with what the STAG's expectations for content are. So if you come across anything like that, or you know of somebody that has a really cool open source project, um, we'd love to have them come and present. Actually, part of the 5G IEEE, <clears throat> Uh, roadmap uh, that's for the 10 year roadmap projects and a few working groups there. Um, you know, time to time I'm participating on the security portion of that working group. Um, so I'm just trying to see if there are some common interests between this and that because on the under the umbrella of security, but their, their focus is obviously driven by the 5G landscape. And um, I personally am chairing you know, one of the co-chairs for the Edge um, working group, Edge uh, services on the under the 5G. <clears throat> so trying to see if there is some way to bring together some of this issue under 
kind of cohesiveness or the same cohesiveness perhaps exists in both places so that the audience is reading the security directions they find there is some consistency among these it is getting very complex obviously no doubt and i don't know how um, you know the open source community is reaching out to the other groups such as the IEEE to to see uh, to to find a way of bringing some cohesiveness for the solutions at the end of the day obviously that's that creates the success for the projects or not when it gets understood by the audiences yeah, tk this came up in a previous uh meeting briefly because i was mentioning how the telecoms are deploying kubernetes and you know, I think one way to go about this is to share the use cases across the two communities of interest. Yeah, I agree. That's a, agree. that's a good point. And we actually have an exploratory item on edge computing in the roadmap. So having a presentation around that topic area would be very relevant and would be useful. Okay. Sounds good. Is that under a particular number, issue number or anything on the edge, or is it just? Uh, no, we have number? we have it tagged as just a note within the project board as a reminder, because we don't actually have any open issues for it because it's not been brought to the group in the past. So this would be the first time. So if you have um, a use case presentation that you want to do in this particular area, go ahead and file that presentation issue. Sounds good. We will discuss that in our group on that and see if we don't have anything ready made at this moment to present uh, in, in this format. But um, we are working towards bringing together the security and the and the edge as it applies to the edge or the vice versa. And then also how the AI ML may place uh, or, or be used in the same conjunction. So we're trying to, we might be having some sort of a world forum at some point in the IEEE and there could be some panel that might be discussing this issue together. And as we move along, it's still a far away, a few months away at least. <clears throat> I think um, I'll try to see if we can share something. Thanks. That would be great. And if folks are interested in this particular topic, is it all right if they reach out to you directly on Slack? Absolutely. I'd welcome that. Thanks. Yeah, Any the other most value of the group is, is the knowledge exchange, right? So it, we we extract a lot from the knowledge and experience of other people, but in order to keep that flow, sometimes we need to to give back ourselves as well. So TK, that that'd be awesome. Sure. Thank you. Sorry. Anything I else? <laughs> I'm trying to get in a simple thing. I think it's simple. Uh, I'm working on a picture of how metadata gets used for security. And one of the few projects I can find that's relevant to this is the Apache Foundation project that's Atlas. And I'm confused about where CNCF fits in Apache and how they work together or don't. And, you know, is there any guidelines from the community about that? Not about that project, but about CNCF and Apache. I don't have any for you. I can say that the structure of the CNCF and the Apache Foundation is slightly different from one another. Um, I don't know of any cross-foundation collaboration that goes on, but my view of that world is very small and very limited. Um, it might be beneficial uh, to reach out to our talk liaisons, Liz Rice and Justin Cormack, or to the CNCF service desk to ask a question about that, to understand a little bit more about where those overlaps or where those um, exchanges occur, because I'm sure something is, is happening. Okay, I have Justin's contact and I'll do that. Thanks. Mark, is, is the storage of the metadata something you've been considering as well? 
Yeah, and that's the back end that one of the projects I found out about was using. That's how I discovered it. Uh, but, you know, the bigger picture here is telemetry, how to get metadata gets built and propagated, how it fits into CICD, which we do talk about because CNCF projects are managing metadata like stuff is using it and so on. So it's, it's, it's complicated and uh, the metadata community, which is another IEEE group that I'm in, is wrestling with this, but we have to, in their, in their venue, for standards work, we have to stay with open source stuff to even talk about it. You know, Minute yeah. Google or AWS product or mentioned, it has to come out. So we really want to be in uh, CNCF like or uh, open source like venue for that. So even if it's like, for example, right, in the statement of how to do this or to propagate metadata for security purposes, um, you really want exemplars that are coming from these communities. I don't so, know if that so, yeah, yeah. Pro propagate is, is one approach. Is there is there like the other is like that centralized and you want to like make that queryable? Yeah, it's complicated. If I understand the question, I mean, the way that I look at this is, which is maybe idiosyncratic, is you have declarative metadata, which can be propagated or is an artifact of a production process. So in CICD, you might have a timestamp. The timestamp becomes metadata. It's created at that time through automation. Or you might do it through discovery. So VLP tools in, in information security will scan the environment and discover stuff, which it will, through inference, create metadata. Like it might say this is something uh, related to classified information, or this is an infrastructure artifact, and the component might be that it's related to cloud as opposed to an on-prem kind of thing. So these two things are often, uh, what, not under unified dashboards, they don't even have the same terminology. So it's, it's it's a problem, and the reason it matters for discover for security teams is forensics and incident management need metadata to act quickly to mine data that might be in Splunk or other open source logs, right? Uh, but on the creation, applications management, performance man monitoring, they're really looking at uh, building the metadata in as part of the construction or a developer uh, artifacts, and those are not uniform or not like they're not unified maybe that's the way to put it not sure i even answered the question it's that complicated yeah if, like e even slicing it alone if like you're doing source code and image scans and and you just want to make easily queryable data for those scans uh but where do you do that how do you do that yeah yeah, it, 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 it intersects with with like supply chain security and like the challenges we've talked around S bombs. And you want to like put like scan results and like S bombs that that marked vulnerabilities in there and like marry the two or like be able to like have a relationship and a reference between those two. It gets interesting. I, I don't know if like, I know of different companies building commercial products around this, and, like taking some open source, but not necessarily contributing a solution back. I don't know if there's something at CNCF, like as Emily would say, would be good to to check with, with Liz and Justin. It may come back with like, hey, tax security should, or like rally people to to like, do the initial commit for a project, or like write a spec for it. I don't know, but yeah, haven't heard of anything happening in, in this ecosystem of cloud native things yet. John yeah. Kinsella had an idea around that <clears throat> with the uh, prescription tags, um, you know, for images. Uh, security and, nutrition labels? Yes, exactly. There's an uh, active issue in the repo for that. I think that's absolutely a genius idea because, you know, if you if you think about how we've done security scanning and, and labeling of the past, it's all been based on <clears throat> distributions that have had RPMs, 
which has a certain level of metadata that comes with those. And those metadata can be scanned and incorporate things like, you know, specific security tags, such as a CVE um, within that metadata. Now, if you have like something like what John was talking about for prescription labels, then you could incorporate some of that metadata along with an image that gets scanned as well. Um, just another way to create that content as you are also creating images as a developer or some level of distributor. Yeah, I mean, there's I, a you. Sorry, go I ahead. was going to say there's a YouTube video of his talk from Cloud Native Security Day on that particular topic. Um, so if you're interested in watching that security nutrition labels talk, check it out on YouTube for the Cloud Native Computing Foundation's channel. I mean, if there's an interest, I could, you know, propose a presentation on this. I'm, I'm overexposed in this meeting already, generally speaking. Uh, so I'm reluctant to do that. But there are, I mean, I'm really enthusiastic about this because there's such a huge gap. You know, the company I work for spends millions on tooling for security products. Almost none of them have capabilities for integrated metadata management. They all use their own. Uh, it all gets stuck into Splunk. It is, you know, creating all kinds of uh, not just confusion, but cost. And uh, it's, it's just not good for the community. Meanwhile, they're competing universal ontologies under development for security by MITRE and a separate academic team out of University of Maryland. Uh, you know, think about it. IT and security have to share metadata. Think about the word container didn't even exist 10 years ago in the sense that it's used today. So if you even say, here's an object or an asset that lives in a container, at a certain point in time, that, that term didn't even have meaning. Then you've got the problem that everybody's got a slightly different synonym for some of these things that are the same, and that has to get worked out. So it's, it's a really important topic in, in the world I operate and trying to work across tools and teams and bring standardized what, ways of going about solutioning and security across organizations. Whereas inside a company, we try to solve it just doing it our way, right? Like we know what our tags are, or we're gonna use our uh, data repo that's built by our chief data officer to decide what kind of analytics to use. And that's, it doesn't scale, right? Even for a big company, it's hard to do. So there's my over-enthusiasm overly enthusiastic pitch for a future talk if you want to hear one. Over. <laughs> Anyone have anything else to bring up? We've got 10 minutes left. No, I take silence as agreement to end hey, nine minutes. Uh, Go ahead, Piyush. Sorry, uh, just a suggestion. Uh, maybe we can, uh, like, we already have some messages pinned on the Slack channel to welcome new members and, you know, guide them towards new initiatives or something like that, right? Maybe we can have a thread pinned over there as well, which uh, includes probably all the new initiatives. The one problem that I, I see and, like, uh, I mean, I have observed over the last couple of meetings is any new person who joins in, they, they are aware of tax security as a whole. But there are a lot of initiatives that are going on in parallel, whether it's serverless, whether it's a uh, supply chain, whether it's um, app delivery, there are multiple other initiatives, right? And reviews and everything, right? So it probably might be just a good idea to have a thread pin there with, where uh, project leads can just uh, upload a, what should we say, a broader outline of the initiative and probably a data visual link to it. Uh, I understand that we already have a bunch of GitHub issues for people to go through and, you know, find out where they can contribute, but uh, it also kind of become uh, a bit overwhelming because these GitHub issues also contain micro issues, which are within an initiative and are related to some work that's going on within the initiative. That's a really good idea um, to have the projects lead create a pin in the main channel to talk about what their current ongoing project is 
That way, anybody joining the channel can become aware of it immediately. And when that activity has come to a close, they can unpin it. Does that sound about as a good summary? Uh, yeah, but uh, I mean, uh, if we create separate pins for each initiative, right, it, it just might become a bit overwhelming. Okay. So a thread might be just a better way to do it. I mean, um, I'm just uh, uh, kind of uh, bouncing ideas here, but it just might become a bit overwhelming. Right? So it's like a... I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ash. Yeah, so one thing that we do is that in the meeting notes itself, we uh, we tag the good first issues for folks to get started so that you can just check out the good, you know, to get started issues. What we can actually do is we can add another table in the meeting notes, which kind of summarizes the ongoing projects. And then you have like a direct link to those projects from the notes itself. So just to create more visibility, that could be like one approach we can do for this in, in addition to whatever we do on Slack as well. Just a thought. I think both of those sound like excellent ideas and I would love to have somebody volunteer to take that on to create that thread or to um, put together that list of projects that we can put um, a new label on. Well, reality is there's so many, it's gonna be overwhelming anyway. <laughs> yeah. uh, I understand on this, but just just a kind of a tip to, you know, um, unburden people from that. Totally. So yeah, one thing we try to balance is, well, if, if we want to get anything done, we need to be hyper-focused and we need to start saying no to more things. But at the same time, we don't want to, we don't want to discourage other people from doing things or, or, or new work. So it's, yeah, it's a fine line of how much, how much do we, spend time like already again if, if you want to pitch in and help do some of the housekeeping and, and help present the work in better ways but we've actually put a lot of time in already and to like creating this roadmap this way and like like dividing and and allocating allocating the work and a lot of us are, are already like trying to push these initiatives forward rather than going to the administrative part so if, if we didn't do it well, there's room for improvement. Great to point that out. If you can draft something to put that pin Slack message and we can put it on, that would be immense help. But yeah, like there's, there's a balance in, in, in it all. I, I agree, I agree, totally agree. Uh, I'll try and create a thread and see where, where it takes us. Uh, sounds good? Thanks. Thanks, Adam. Yes. Anything else? No. Uh, what more? Uh, <laughs> I was going to say. Go ahead, TK. <laughs> I was going to say what might also help if there is a way to, at a high level, to link all this together to show that this is this has a meaning under the CNCF security, so to speak. So anything that we are addressing different projects and so forth and how they are coming together or what might be a potential link among them, that might be some help, I think. So the majority of the projects that the group takes on have a direct alignment with the charter that we have. Um, we try to do a good job of capturing that when we have our scoping discussions, but that may not always be transparent. So that's something that we could potentially look at doing um, as part of triage when we evaluate whether or not the work is something that should be brought up in a meeting or potentially um, postponed or, or marked as it won't do. We haven't actually done a won't do that I'm aware of, um, but I think that's something that's maybe worthwhile to bring up. Right, at least, you know, just to get a, some sort of a high level um, kind of a, um, you know, view as to how all this kind of tied together to serve one purpose from a top level. Have you, have you read the 
tag charter on the GitHub repo? No, I have not, to be honest with you. Don't recall reading that. Is that pretty much what is addressed there? Very much so. So okay. I'd, I'd encourage you to to have a look at that first. Uh, and yeah, I like understand what, what like the reason of being and purpose and even the criteria of like, how do we prioritize things? Yeah. There. If you have questions, feel free to like poke holes at it and we can like help Crystal instead. But like this group, much like open source projects, like as they grow and evolve, like there's like you reassess what your scope and your mission is, but it also happens that as the community grows, you kind of shift a lot of focus from writing the code and maintaining the project to actually like uh, taking on requests for help for issues or new proposals. So uh, yeah, there's a great book called like Working in Public by Nadia Ekbal that talks about like this, uh, this transition of, of shift of, of, like stages of, of a project. Uh, I'd encourage you to read it. I, I find it fascinating to like right at the moment we're at. But yeah, I'm, I'm digressing there a little bit. Uh, let me paste the link to the to the charter uh, branches off from the readme. Emily, any or Ash or Adna, anything you, you want to add to that as we wrap up? I think that that's pretty much it. Challenge accepted on the uh, creation of an issue that's a won't do. All right, I'm going to let everyone go. Enjoy your one minute of freedom before your next meeting. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.